So let's talk about the true kingdom. And before I get into my real topic, I was, I'm going to talk about what I was saying yesterday before I have to get off. Um, it's time for us to understand what the kingdom is and what the church is. A lot of us are walking in ignorance of what God want us to be in further from fur further away from what God truly want us to be in. Um, I know a lot of you have heard that, you know, it's relationship over religion. And a lot of people say that, but a lot of people don't really explain what that really means. And we need to start to understand what it really means to be in relationship with our father and not to be in a relationship with religion. Um, one of the biggest mistakes is people think that Jesus came to bring a religion and he didn't. He did not bring a religion. He brought a kingdom. As it states in Isaiah 9, 6, that he come to bring a government on his shoulders. And I, I want this to be understood truly, because if we start to understand what Jesus brought us, then we will start to understand what we lost in the beginning. When Adam and Eve fell, they did not lose a religion. They did not lose a they did not lose a denomination. They literally lost authority. They literally lost the dominion, the rulership that God have given them over this earth. So when Jesus came back, <laughs> he came back to give you exactly what you lost which is the kingdom of God. And with that mindset, with that understanding, we're able to walk on this earth differently than what we did when we was walking under the statues of religion. We know religion gives us denominations. Religious gives us rules and religious gives us these types of things that, that the word of God is actually not saying or actually not telling us to do. Religion gives us a whole different structure than what the kingdom brings. Now, as I told y'all, and as I said before, God doesn't have a problem with religion long as the religion is right. He said the religion has to be pure, which is that you're taking care of the widows, that you're a father and a help to the fatherless. That's what true religion is. But if you want to be what real, let's, let's brand it off on what it really is. Just like you have a country right now, those who live in America, you live inside of a country, but in that country, man, men have created or mankind have created buildings or we have created certain businesses. We created certain workforces and jobs inside of that country that God has have made for us. We did not create the country. But inside that country, we created jobs and, and certain buildings and certain businesses. That's what the kingdom of God is like. God came to bring us a kingdom, a country, a government. And inside that country, inside that kingdom, we as men created the religion. We as men created the Christianity. We created the, the Muslims and the Buddhisms. We created the denominations. We created the Judaisms. We created those things. But God literally said, here, I give you a kingdom. I give you a government. This is what I bring to you. So that's the mindset that we have to live in. We need to stop focusing and start and stop living inside of these religious factions and start living as citizens of God's kingdom. And so now that we got an understanding of what the kingdom is, the kingdom of God is a, co a country. The kingdom of God is a government. The kingdom of God is him being as king and rulership and supreme over that country. And he, are, he is rulership over his citizens. So we are supposed to be his citizens of his kingdom. But we're more than just citizens. Our glory to God. We are his sons and daughters. So that's the, that's the even more beautiful thing. So now that we got what the kingdom is, let's break down right quick what the church is. A lot of us know it. 
but a lot of us don't know it. You do not go to church. It's impossible for you to go to church. You must be a part of the church. When God, when Jesus said on this rock, I build my ecclesia, I build my church. He wasn't talking about a building. He wasn't talking about four walls. He was talking about a group of people. But remember, we are talking about a king. So we're going by kingdom mindsets of what church means. Church means ecclesia. It means senate. A king called out people. So we supposed to be a called out people from the king called the church, which means the body of Christ. So you can't go to a church. You must be a part of the church. So with that mindset, and please hear me, with that one mindset, it make you turn from just walking in holiness in that building and start to walking in holiness wherever you go. A lot of us only walked in holiness in that building because we thought that building was the church. But but until we started to realize that, wait a minute, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means wherever I go is holy ground. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is living in me. And when I'm connected with another brother or sister in Christ, right there is where the church begins. So if it's in a car, if it's in a restaurant, if it's at a home, if it's at a, on the street, in a parking lot, if two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst. That's where the church is. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a building. There's nothing wrong of having a local spot to go to. But long as we understand what that spot means, as long as we understand what the church means, and we are the representation that some will ever see. Absolutely. But sis, this is why we must understand what who we truly are. Because if we're not understanding who we truly are, we will not represent right. <laughs> if you don't know that you're supposed to represent Jesus in a certain way, you ain't going to do it. You're going to represent the way religion told you to represent. But if you start to represent how a king told you to represent, and then our representation will be different. We won't be mocked and talked about like the way we do, because a lot of that falls on our own selves. So we need to begin to learn who we are in Christ, who we are as the church, what we are in this kingdom. And then that's how we operate. So the reason why I really came on here, y'all, is because I wanted to say this. I know it may be some of y'all on here who is saved. And it may be some of y'all on here who is not saved. And even later on who may see this. John 3, 36. I want to read John 3, 36 to y'all. It said, he who believes in the son has everlasting life. Listen clearly. And those who are saved, this is your opportunity as well to learn, take notes and say this to someone else. He who believes in the son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So basically he's saying, he who believes in the son. So those who believe that Jesus the Christ is the son of God, those who believe that Jesus the Christ is God, those who believe that God came into flesh to pay the penalty of mankind, which is death on by being crucified. Those who believe that Jesus died, but he rose from the grave. And those who believe that Jesus is Lord and Savior will have eternal life. That eternal life is now open to those who believe in Jesus today. That kingdom of God that Jesus presented to us is now open to those who believe in Jesus today. The kingdom of God is a land of freedom. It's a land of peace, equality. It's a land with no famine, no sickness, no illness, no murdering. 
It's a land with no wickedness. God has rid of all these things in his kingdom. This is a land that all those who are part of it will will be will flourish and will prosper eternally. This is a land where those who are children of the Most High will experience the same wealth as the Most High. In his kingdom, there's common wealth. So the citizens is as rich and wealthy as the king. And as we know, Jesus is full of wealth. Everything about him is wealth. And those who are citizens of that kingdom experience that same wealth and health and mindset in every aspect. In this kingdom, there are angels that are here to protect you. They won't abuse their power like you see police officers do today. They won't abuse their power as you see uh, representatives of the government do today. They use their power to protect the sons and daughters of God. But you only receive these benefits if you believe in the son. But it says right here also, and he who does not believe in a son shall not see life, but the wrath of God, but the wrath of God abides on them. That means the person who do not believe that Jesus is the son of God, that person who don't believe that Jesus is God, that person who believe that Jesus, that God did not come into flesh to pay the penalty for mankind, that person who believes that Jesus did not rise from the dead or isn't Lord and Savior. And even if you believe all those things and don't obey the word of God, he said the wrath of God abides in you and you shall not see eternal life. That means that you are now, so let's put it this way. In the beginning, Adam rebelled against God. And because of that rebellion, because of that rebellion, it caused an eternal punishment on all mankind that we all had to pay, which was death, not just physical death, but spiritual death, the true death, the real death. And in that death is the kingdom of darkness. And in that land is full of famine, full of sickness, full of poverty, full of hate, full of wickedness. And it, much like what we see today, but the crazy part about it is eternal. And in that darkness, it's fate. And those who are bound to that, they will receive God's wrath, which is the king, which is the lake of fire. <laughs> So my job here right now is to plead to anybody who see this. If you have not received God's free gift, which is Jesus the Christ, which he have offered this life for you and I. So me and you wouldn't have to pay the penalty of death, but to receive his kingdom and to receive eternal life. This is your opportunity to do so right now. Like we say, Jesus did not come to give you the religion. He did not come to give you denominations. He did not come to give you all these things that you've been seeing recently. He literally came to give you a free land called the kingdom of God. He literally came to give you salvation in that land that you will have freedom with me because I'm telling you now, the systems of this world, the governments of this world, will one day be destroyed. If you look at what's going on today from the wickedness to the deaths, to the murders, to the scams, to the hatred, to the nations against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms, there's not one government that's working. There's not one system that's working. I don't care how good you think America is, how good you think China is, how good you think Africa is, whatever parts. No government is working. Why? Because every country has multiple deaths a day. Every country have multiple rapes a day. Every country have multiple hatred and hate crimes and racism and, and thievery. Everything, you got hunger and starvation and thirst. You have all these famines because none of these governments, none of these rulers of these governments are working. Why? Because all of these kingdoms are ran by Satan.
What did Jesus say? That God, that Satan is the God of this earth, the God of this world, rather. Which means the systems. That's why Satan tried to give Jesus the kingdoms. Remember that? When he said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world if you bend the knee to me. Why was he able to say that? Because Satan has the keys to the kingdoms of this world. So when Jesus first came, he came to take the keys from the kingdom of death, from the from the from the spiritual kingdom. So he said, you know what? I'm going to take back these keys because the disciples thought that Jesus was coming to free them physically right now. He said, no, nah, I came to free you for real, which is in the spiritual realm. But when I come again the second time, that's when I will crush all of the kingdoms of the world and they will now be under my kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. So we now can accept God's kingdom right now in the midst of the kingdom of darkness. But it's up to you to experience that. It's up to you to want that. He wants you to experience his kingdom right now in your household. So if you're going through financial problems, he wants you to know that you can be content in all things, that, that he is your resource, he is your source, and that you have riches in heaven and he can open up the windows of heaven and fix your problems. He wants you to know right now in this land of sickness, you could be sick, but you reside under the government of God so you can seek the father's healness you can seek what is healed in heaven can be now healed on earth and you can receive his medical care his medical care don't have all them problems like the world medical care has his food benefits don't have the food benefits like the world has which will end which does end which leads into starvation his his don't do that that's why he said, don't store your treasures on earth where moths can eat, thieves can steal, Satan can manipulate. Satan can't manipulate the treasures in heaven. So when God opens, he opens. When God closes, he closes. Only he maneuvers that. But it's up to us to make that mindset. It's up to us to make that choice that you can choose to have the government of God ruling your mind, ruling your body, ruling your family and your house. Stop thinking because the world said that this is legal. It doesn't that don't mean it's legal in the eyes of God. We have to walk in accordance to what the word of God say, not to be some religious know it all. It is that you are a citizen of a kingdom and these are the laws of this kingdom and you live by it. No one call you religious because you stop at a red light. You are abiding by the laws of America. No one calls you a religious know it all or you too good because you stop at a stop sign. You are following the laws of the land. So that is the same mindset when it comes to the kingdom of God. When you love thy wife as Christ loved the church and you don't go lust after another woman, you are following the laws of the land. When you love thy neighbor as you love thyself, you are following the laws of the land, which is the kingdom of God. Why? Because your king, your governor, your governor is the Jesus, the Christ. You don't have to have a physical owner or a physical king govern you. You have a spiritual king governing you. So that's the difference between someone who's walking in the kingdom of God and someone who's not. You're going to see it in their countenance. You're going to see it in their mindset. They're going to say, why you ain't tripping like everybody else ain't tripping? Because I have a spiritual governor. My king governs me. I want to please the sight of Jesus Christ in my mind. So I'm going to think righteous thoughts. I ain't going to think thoughts of murder and slander. I ain't going to think thoughts of lust and perversion. Why? Because I have a governor, a spiritual king that's guiding me, that sees me, and I want to please him. That's all. He who, be who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. It is as simple as that. God bless you and put a blessing on you and your family.
in the mighty name. Hey, all glory to the king, Sean. Thank you. It is as simple as that. It is no more sugarcoating. It is no more trying not to hurt people's feelings. Or I, I don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. No. The word is a double-edged sword. It's, it's, it's as sharp as a double-edged sword. It is it, it it will puncture you. It will offend you. It will cut you. It will slice that sinful nature off you. And it will convict the mess out of you. That's how strong this word is. This word don't have no sugar coating on it. This word ain't watered down. You watered down. You sugar coating it. You making trying to make people feel good. No, every time the father sent the prophet to the people, it hit them where it hurts. It hit them where it hurts. And the only reason I was able to finally change and repent because God hit it where it hurts. He hid it in my spirit. He hid it on the flesh and he made me see that I was walking in foolishness. I was walking in death. I was walking in lust and perversion. I was walking in fornication and adultery. I was walking in lies. I was walking in that living in it. And he said, you're not walking in the spirit. You're walking in the flesh. He had to come with me and show me and tell me literally where it hurts. But because of that, I was able to repent and change my mind and change my lifestyle because of that. All this watering down stuff is what would have kept me walking in the flesh. So as he said in John 3, 36, he who believes, he who trusts in the son has everlasting life. And if you choose not to trust and if you choose not to believe in the son, you will not see eternal life. But the wrath of God abides on you. It's flat out. You either make you either you either going to be as a citizen of God's kingdom, a son of God or heir to God's kingdom by accepting the king. Or you're going to be an enemy of the king. You're going to have the wrath of God abide on you. It's simple as that. You can hate it or love it flat out. Just like as simple as this. You drink water, you hydrate it. You don't drink water, you dehydrate it. You can hate it or love it, but that's facts. Facts is facts. Facts is facts. Which one is you going to roll with? As, as I think it was Elijah who said that, choose you this day who you're going to serve. If you want to choose that there's no Jesus, then choose there's no Jesus. If you want to choose there is a Jesus, you better be walking according to that mindset right now. Because there's no, this is what it means when God says, I don't, I, I'd rather you be cold than lukewarm. I rather, I, Jesus, look, the father respects a, 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 an atheist way more than he respects someone who claiming to walk in the kingdom of God but it's nothing but hatred and lies. He respects someone who says out of their mouth that I don't want no Jesus more than someone who's claiming they love Jesus, but backstabbing his character in front of everybody. You respect an enemy more than a friend who's claiming to be a friend, but is really an enemy because at least you know. So it's no more if or but or should I. Look, if you win, you win. If you not, you not. It's simple as that. This is a country we live in. in. And we're trying to represent this country called the kingdom of God. Is you in this country? Or are you not? Because we at war. We at war and we ain't got time to figure out who's really is and who's really not. Because if you acting like you in, but you really not, you causing more destruction. Make your choice. And if you choosing to be in this, be in it. Gather for him. He said, those who gather with me are for me, but those who don't even gather, you still against me. What is you doing? 
What is your life like? Are you, is your everyday life is to resemble Jesus? Are you pushing any type of content out of your lifestyle to represent the kingdom? Is your career geared towards the kingdom? Is your family geared towards the kingdom? Is your Facebook, your social media geared towards the kingdom? What are you doing in your everyday life to say, I'm going to bring the kingdom here on earth as it is in the kingdom? What is your lifestyle about? Are you just a, a, a believer and you say you believe, but you ain't doing anything to make the assurance that the kingdom of God is here on earth? Why you think he saved you? He did not save you just to save you and you live how you want to live. You have now become, look, first off, you was already a part of a war that you didn't even know about. You was already in a part of a destruction mindset that was about to happen. This earth is going to die soon. So you was already a part of something that was already ending and he placed you in his camp. So now that you in his camp, are you benefiting the camp? Are you working for the kingdom or against it? No one has no ability and no right to sit out. No one. Because I guarantee you this, everyone that's against Jesus is working hard against them. I don't see now one demonic follower who ain't putting that work in, who ain't making sure they're spreading fornication, who ain't making sure they're spreading adultery, who ain't making sure they ain't spreading drugs and lies and murdering and killings and rapes and, and, and all these things. I see it every day on every TV station, on every TikTok, on every, on every social media platform, on every commercial. They are pushing the kingdom of darkness with no end. They're, they they ain't tired. The enemy ain't tired. He, they loving to push the kingdom. That's what preaching looks like. They preach the kingdom of darkness, which is fornication, which is hatred, which is which is perversion. They push it. But we who are of Christ. Oh, let me not, you know, let me not show what marriage really look like. Let me not show how to, to, uh, to raise up their children as Christ told us to in the name of the Lord. Let us, let me not show them what walking in obedience look like because I'm going to, you know, trample over some feet. Let me, let me just wait until Sunday. Then I represent Jesus. But Monday through Saturday, let me keep it hush, hush. What is you talking about? No. No, that's that's not how it goes. And if that's how we was, that's what religion teach. That's what religion teach. That's what denominations teach. That's what your Baptist, your Pentecostal, your Kojic, your Apostolic, all these things. It teaches these little tricks. It teaches these things that keep you from the authority of the kingdom of God, which God has given you. God ain't telling, God said, be bold about this. God said, give up your life. God said, your life is now my life. God said, you are in this fight. God said, now be ambassadors of Christ. God said, now walk by two by twos and show the power of the kingdom, healing others, speaking in unknown languages, prophesying, giving them the gospel, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ and the gospel of the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus said to do. You going to be hated though. Count the cost. You going to be hated. You going to get ostracized. You going to be talked about. You going to be looked at as lame. You going to be looked at as a a, a Bible thumper. You going to be looked at as some religious freak. You going to be looked at as you think you better than everybody. You are going to be looked at as holier than now. That's the counting the cost. These are the things that's going to happen when you get when you come a part of this kingdom. But greater is he who is inside of me than he is of the world because whatever persecution I receive out here and got ain't going to compare to what he's going to give me. But we got to count that cost. Or are you afraid to get talked about so you don't really mention him? Are you afraid that you're going to get ostracized from your family so you do what the family wants you to do? You still cuss and drink how they drink and cuss and act how they act because you don't want to show like, you know, I'm better than them. He said, come out amongst them. Show your separation. There's no blendings with light and dark. The light shows for a fact that it's different from the dark. When you flick the light on, the darkness scatter. All you see is light. It's a difference. That's what we supposed to be in the kingdom of God. Hmm. 
that it won't be your effort. It's God or nothing. <laughs> if God is all knowing, he knew someone would be misled by the devil. Absolutely, he do. He knows everything. He knows everything. He absolutely do. And people say, why don't he stop it? He did. He does. He has. He stopped it. He, he stopped it from the moment he made mankind. He stopped it. He stopped all the foolishness even before mankind was even created. God don't start nothing until he finished it. He already saw the end before he saw that before he even made the beginning. So he stopped the famine. He stopped the sickness. He stopped the death. He stopped the hunger. He stopped the thirst. He stopped the rapes. He stopped the slavery. He stopped it all. So if you don't want to see that, you don't want to see it. But I know my king stopped it. He you, He's stopping it today. He's stopping it with his people. And he's going to stop it. And he's going to create a whole new peace, a whole new government where none of that's going to happen. God sees it all. He sees all the sickness. He sees all the death. And he made us, he, he, like he told Moses, I see my children been suffering for 400 years. It's time to free them. And he freed them. And that was just an example of what he did with us and what he's going to do. He did it. He's doing it. And he's going to do it. <laughs> he did it. He's doing it. And he's going to do it. God is promising just like all right, just like this. I'm telling y'all, stop looking at this as religion and start re see, realizing this as a kingdom. Every president you see came with great promises and y'all was hoping for those promises when he said that your taxes will be lowered. Your finances will be increased. The job minimum wage pay will be increased. Food, there will be no food shortages. You will have able to get business loans. You will be able to, to do these things. And you was like, man, he's going to stop these things. And he's going to bring forth these things. You go, you'd be like, man, we need to vote him as president. That's the man we looking for. We, we going to continue to, that's what. The way you believe. And hold so tight to men's promises. How much more tighter should you hold on to the promises of God? Timothy, I know it's going to be people who want Barabbas and we understand. But that's what make it even more true. That's what make it even more true because he said it's going to be people who scream out Barabbas. If you didn't scream out Barabbas right now, then it wouldn't be true. But you just made true the prophecies even more. You just made the scriptures even more true by saying what you said. If you never, you would have done more damage by not saying nothing. But because you said that you brought to life the scriptures. Thank you. You proven the scriptures more right. There's going to be multiple people. There's going to be a wide, broad road that screams out, give me Barabbas. <laughs> There's going to be a broad road that say, give me Barabbas, not Jesus. And guess what? You're going to get your Barabbas. Because they got him. Barabbas came out. Barabbas was a thief, a murderer, a liar. And that Barabbas y'all wanted came out later to terrorize them same homes, probably, who was calling for him. Them same, that, them same people that wanted to free Barabbas probably was the same homes that he broke in that same night. <laughs> 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 it was some extra murdering happening in that same year because Barabbas was now free. Why? Because y'all wanted Barabbas. What is Satan? A liar, a thief, a murderer. And that's exactly what he doing to your lives. That's exactly what he doing to your mind. That's exactly what he doing to your children. That's exactly what he doing to your home. That's exactly what he's doing to your spirit, your character, your lifestyle, your, your, your mouth, the way you speak, the way you talk, the way you understand things. He's killing it. He's destroying it. And he's stealing from it. And it shows. That's why he said you will know a tree by its fruit. You will know when someone is, is, is grafted and a part of the true vine 
and you will know when someone is a part of the deadly demonic dark tree. You will know a tree by its fruits. What do you sound like on your daily basis? What do your what do your conversation look like? What do your activities look like? What do your mind the the thoughts? What are your thoughts about? <laughs> what are your thoughts about? What are your because whatever comes out of your mouth is in your heart. We ain't talking about this organ. We ain't talking about the organ heart. We talking about the true heart. Your mind, the thing that controls and moves, whatever comes out of your heart, comes out of your mouth is in your heart. Is 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 some of the most perverse words coming out of here? Is some of the most hatred things coming out of this mouth? Are you saying the most disgusting things? Are you always backbiting and talking about somebody? Do you do this? Do this got gossip coming out? When you go through a situation, is it is it a bunch of worrying and grief and complaining and murmuring? Or is it peaceful? Is it forgiving? Is it loving? Or is it encouraging? Is it scriptures? Is it what the king would say? Is it uplifting someone? Is it bringing out the joy in things? Is it not worrying? Is it not murmuring? Which 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 tree you on? And examine yourself. Be real. Examine yourself. If your tree is full of foolishness, God has given you the mindset and giving you the ability and the opportunity right now to repent. Repent means to change your mind and actions and to say, dog. I sound like trash on a daily basis. I need fixing. <laughs> I need to be fixed in the heart so my mouth can sound right. And if you and if you talking like you talk from the tree of life, this is your opportunity to thank God that he changed you because you was once on that tree of death. You was once talking foolishly too. You was once one of the probably the biggest cussers, a professional cusser, the, the biggest liar that somebody has ever seen. But now you walk in with the kingdom of God. So this is your opportunity to still walk in repentance and thanking God that he changed you. And know that if he changed you, he can change that person that's still walking with foolishness. Have you seen a certain presidential candidate tell the poem about the woman of the snake? You are saying all these things are demonic. That's just nonsense. Well, uh, why will the way you talk impact it? The way you talk is very huge. You're, so put it this way. But this is where we go of not knowing who we are. You are in an image and likeness of God. So put it this way. Not everyone are children of God. Everyone is not children of God. Please, Please know that. Please hear that. There are children of Satan and there are children of God, but all of us are still made in his image and likeness. That means all of us still have certain abilities and powers. And what God said, let there be light just by his word. It was. And so with us. That's why he say, I will judge you according to every idle word that you spoke, that your word will either convict you or, or, or acquit you. That's how powerful your words are. So if you speak death, if you speak foolishness, if you speak illness, guess what? You bring forth that your words can break a relationship or make it. Your words can make your children love you or, 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 or regret even being your child. Your words can get you fired or get you hired. Your words can get you out of a jam or put you even deeper in it just by your words. Your words is that powerful. As he said, there's life and death in the power of your tongue. We need to learn how to use our tongue. Are you able to use it and speak life to things that need to be spoken life to and speak death to things that need to be spoken death to? Or are you speaking death to the things that need to be spoken life to and speaking life to the things that need to be spoken death to? Even in that, that's even that's even deeper.
So I hope that made sense. Limited evidence he put of his limited evidence he put of his existence. Jesus is my king. Bars, man, bars. So yeah, I just wanted to come to tell y'all that. I wanted to come to express um that today is the day for you to choose Jesus. I know everybody that's on here ain't saved. If we go on by scripture that the broad way, that the, the way of evil is broad and there are many that choose that way and only a few find a narrow path. Most likely in every set, in every setting you're in, a scenario you're in, the majority is not saved. <laughs> and that's and that's just facts. So I want to say that this is your opportunity to receive Jesus the Christ. I promise you this, though. This is factual that I don't care if you want to see that there's no evidence, that much evidence of Jesus. And all. I'm about to tell you something that is evidence. You can die in five minutes. I promise you that. I promise you that you do not have an hour. Who said that you got another hour to live? It's a fact that you can die as soon as this live. I promise you there are people dying right now. Hold on. Somebody just died right now. Wait. Another person, I promise you, another person just died. And I promise you somebody who is not in Christ just died right now and opened their eyes in hell right now right now again right now again that's how quick people are dying who said that you ain't one of those people who said you wouldn't be one of those people and i promise you right now that if you do not receive jesus the christ as your lord and savior if you do not give him up give up your right to pay that penalty which is death and give it to him you will pay that penalty when you die everyone has a court date after this life and if you want to pay your own fine which is death because you have rebelled against god all your life you have rebelled since the beginning of time and you live in a monstrous mindset you do monstrous things, you do perverted things, and you one day will have to pay that penalty. If you don't want to give somebody to pay that for you, then so be it. But I promise you, when you die, <clears throat> you will have to pay that. But those who said, Jesus, I see that I won't be able to pay this righteously. I won't be able to stand after I pay this penalty. I want you to pay it for me because if you pay it for me, I will be free from this guilt. I will be free from that demonic in that demonic lifestyle that I will now be in for an eternity. Jesus, take this for me, please. I give it to you. Only those will receive eternal life. I don't want to pay this penalty. I don't want to pay for my mistakes. I repent from my mistakes. I'm sorry for my mistakes. I'm sad I lived a crazy lifestyle. I'm sad I did some reckless things and I'm repentant of it. But I thank God that he said he erased my, my sins, that he has forgiven me. He's gave me a whole forgiveness. He cleared my debt. He said, you're no longer, uh, you no longer have to pay this debt because it was millions upon millions of sins. And he said, I free it for you right now. If you call me your Lord and savior, that means that you trust that I saved you. And now that you trust that I own you, I give it, I give you my life. I give it to you. You can take it. So now use my life as you see fit. So my life is now geared towards him. I don't own me no more. He bought me. He bought me for my freedom. So I will live my life carrying out the sentence of serving Jesus, pushing his kingdom, pushing his salvation, loving my wife as Christ loved the church, loving my neighbor as I love myself, putting my God and loving him with all of our heart, mind and soul. I'm going to forgive people even when I don't want to. But I'm going to do it because he forgiven me. And there's nothing you could do more than what I have already done in the spiritual realm. Because I already know that this life is not it. So I will take the, the lesser of what's to come down here. Because I know that I'm going to get the greater later. She said, child, let me go ahead and repent and just... <laughs> Just in case, sis, keep on repenting. Keep on repenting.
a, a, a man to that. Repentance, a, as we as we tell people, repentance is not a one time thing. Repentance is an everyday thing, an everyday thing, an every moment thing. The moment you start, the moment you realize you, you thought something silly, ah, oh, I repent of that. Nope, I don't live, I don't think like that. I don't, nope, nope. So keep on repenting, sis. Amen. Amen. So look, y'all, I'm, I'm nobody special on this earth. I'm no famous person. I'm just uh, I'm just famous in heaven. I'm just uh, an heir to the kingdom of God. I'm, I'm no one you know. I'm no one saying take what I say as gold. I'm saying take what I say and go search it out. Go research it for yourself. And, and, and that's it. I ain't trying to make a name for me. I'm trying to make a name for the kingdom of God. I know this, there's plethora of people on, on today's time preaching something. So I'm no, I'm, you know, I'm nothing special out of the thing. Everybody's got something to say. But because I now have an opportunity such as this, that God placed us all in this age of technology, I'm going to take advantage of it. Even if it's saturated, even if everybody I'm, I'm going to take, I'm going to take advantage. And I'm going to one day say, Father, in the age of technology, I took care and did what I was supposed to do. I took advantage of what you've given me and I preached your word online. I guarantee you if Apostle Paul had TikTok, my man would have been going live every 20 minutes, five hour lives. <laughs> He said, hey, I ain't about to catch no boat down there. I'm about to click live. And I want all y'all to get the church of uh, Philip, uh, Philippians, uh, the church of such and such. Get on live because I'm going on tonight. So I want to be one of the ones who say he want to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I did the works of that he called in my age. I had my hands on the plow. And I did what I could. And is it is it the greatest thing ever? Maybe not. But I'm going to do what I can. If I, I do music, so I'm going to do kingdom music. I do live, so my live's going to be about the kingdom. I do editings and videos. There's only kingdom stuff I'm going to edit. I post things on, script, on, on Facebook. I do posts. It's going to be about the kingdom of God. Everything that I do is going to represent the king. I'm going to do what I can. So do what you can. Because me doing what I can and you doing what I can now just tripled up. Now imagine if it's five of us doing what we can. Oh, imagine if it's 50 of us, all of us doing what we can, spreading the coming king. Pushing the message that the kingdom of God is near. The second coming of Christ is coming prepare get prepared be ready imagine if we was pushing this message consistently that's why he said in matthew that's when the end will come when everyone proclaims when the kingdom of god is being proclaimed to all of the nations not the religion of god not the denomination of god not your own thoughts of god but the kingdom, the government, the country, his land, his heaven of God, his structure, his lifestyle, what he's about, what he's bringing us. When, when his kingdom, when his rulership is being proclaimed to all of the nations, that there's a government that's going to be better than all the governments that you have ever been a part of. There's a king that's coming to rule out and outdo every other king that has ever been here. There's a peace that's going to outdo all the peace that has ever been said. There is a food benefit, a shelter benefit, a, a health package that's going to outdo every health package that has ever been thought of. There's police protection and angels that's going to outdo any type of police protection that's been thought of in any other government. There's a wellness plan. There's a there's a whole wealth care, a health care that's going to be brought forth that no man should ever be hungry again like no other government. 
That's what he's saying. Preach, preach my kingdom, preach my policies, preach my health package, preach my health package, preach that when you sick, I can make you healed and whole again and you will never be sick again. Y'all got y'all got health care and packages where you got to jump through loops to just get seen or just get an x-ray. Uh, but no, I got a thing where I speak a word and you heal for good. I got a river of living water that if you drink upon that. You ain't never got a hunger or thirst again. You trying to figure out what you feeding your family every single day. I say take a sip and you good for the rest of your eternal life. You trying to figure out how you going to pay a bill. All I say is think upon me and you riches in Christ. <laughs> He's giving you a kingdom where you ain't got to worry about a bill. You ain't got to worry about a light. You ain't got to worry about a dinner. You ain't got to worry about an illness. You ain't got to worry about none of that. You ain't got to worry about your children being taken. You ain't got to worry about somebody being raped, somebody looking at your wife. You ain't got to worry about if you walking down the street too late. You ain't got to worry about if you need to pack a gun. You got angels everywhere protecting you. I'm saying I'm talking about a true country with true peace, true protection, a true army. He got real armies. United States think they got an army. China think they got an army. Look at the heavens armies. God got an army that one angel came down and killed 182,000 humans in the Old Testament. One angel, one angel came and slew thousands of humans. Because they was trying to attack Elijah, I believe. I think this is when they were trying to attack Elijah. And you tell them. So that's the government. That's the kingdom. That's what we're supposed to be pushing to all of the nations. That's what we're supposed to be looking forward to. And look, listen, and then I'm done. You don't have to wait till death to experience this. He said you can have my kingdom in your home right now, your home, your temple, which is the Holy Spirit. And so now that you want to receive my kingdom and receive my, receive my salvation, receive me, I will now give you the greatest gift, which is the Holy Spirit. Now you can walk upon your everyday life here on earth in the kingdom of God. You can start your everlasting life here right now now. So now you able to walk in victory through your circumstances. Even when your bank account look funny, you know who your true source is. Why? Because you got the kingdom of God in you. So now, you know, regardless of what the world may try to do, because you still know that this world is falling, you got the government of God in your home. So regardless of what famine may hit you to hit the world, you good. What, what, regardless of what, what, who may a thousand may fall on your right or your left. You good. Why? Because you got the Holy Spirit. You got the governor of the kingdom living inside of you, governing you, transforming you to now look like the king in heaven. So let it be on earth as it is in heaven. God is transforming you right in front of your eyes. Those who have the Holy Spirit in you. That's the greatest Jesus you alone. Amen. You are speaking the good news, brother. Amen. Thank you, sis. All glory to the king. Is this still zero? Hey, Miko, I'm going to just say this once and I'm going to end it at this. There's so much evidence. There's so much. You now live in the age of knowledge. I mean, you can learn something so quick. You can research something so quick. And if you truly want to seek out the evidence of Jesus, you can with the click of a button. So if you choose in this day and age to still not want to believe these certain things, it's because you chose to not believe. That's fine. And that's all right. That's yes, all right. 
he said this. He said this. The simplest evidence that there is a creator is just the simple fact of what you see. He gave you the earth, the moon, the stars, the, the gravity, your breath, the systems. Everything is in rotation. There is evidence right in front of your eyes every single day, every single hour, every single second that there is evidence of a, of a creator. And that's just even if you don't even believe in the creator that we believe in, there's just evidence of something. But only a fool could see this. Only a fool could see this and say there's no God. Only a fool could say that. But, mm. but I say this. This is your opportunity now, my brother, to seek if you really want if you really want to know. If you really want to know, make it your life make it your life goal to do. Seek this like no other. Seek it like treasure. If you really want to know about this, then go ahead and seek it. Don't don't make it to the fact that you just say it ain't nothing. Go out and actually continue to look. But yeah. But at the same time, I'm not going to cast my pearls. You already, I already know the difference. I'm learning more. I promise y'all it's getting to that point. I'm, I'm learning more and more who to cast your pearls to and who not. You know who's going to trample them and try to hurt you. And you know who's going to pick them up and say, <gasps> I had to learn that. I had to learn that the hard way. But I learned it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I learned it. And so I'm not saying that everyone is, is some people are, are useless or some people are, are, you know, redeemed, can't be redeemed. That's a lie, because if I can be changed, so can everybody else. But I know that there's seasons and there are seasons when people are in straight rebellion and in their rebellion, like, like the prodigal son. He was in a season of straight rebellion. But then he went into a season of he came to a, he came to itself and realize I can even eat like the slaves or the, the servants in my father's home. And he came to another point where I need to go home. I need to, I need to say, Father, I sinned against heaven. I sinned against you. There are seasons. So in that moment, in that season of rebellion with the prodigal son, all them pearls would have been smashed upon when he was, when he was just in the rebellious phase. I hope y'all got that. His chosen ones have to go to humble themselves. I'm still learning. He will see us through. Amen. Amen, bro. We, we, we are still learning. We are still learning. Look, look, we've been living. I've been living. I'm 36. I've been living in full-blown rebellion sin majority of my life I've been a broken mind for the longest that I can remember so even though Jesus have saved me and redeemed me I still need a lot of renewing I still need a lot of a lot of more walking with the spirit a lot of more being out of this world in walking with the Holy Spirit consistently. So he still, now don't, I'm so thankful. He changed me though. He changed your boy a whole lot, a whole lot. But it's so much more. He's still tweaking and he's getting me prepared. He's getting this prepared for my new body. He can't put, he can't put this in a new body the way it is. He have to, because in, you don't want to put a, a janked up engine inside of a new 2052 car. You don't want a two, you don't want a 1992 engine in a 2030 car. 
you want a brand new engine inside of a brand new car and that's what he's doing he's preparing he's, he's fine-tuning this engine of ours he's tweaking it up he's doing some supernatural healing on each and every one of our hearts so when he put us inside of our glorified bodies, the bodies that he already got prepared for us, that's already healed and nice and ready to go and look like Jesus and can't get sick, can't get old, can't get hurt, can't get sin in it, can't get destruction in it, will never die, will, will be able to to um, to fly and, and, and to disappear and heal and do all the things Jesus do. That body he created, he said, I come to go and prepare a place for you, that home. He's getting this ready here now. But we have to walk in that. We have to be willing to get our mind renewed. Are you willing to get your mind renewed on a daily basis so you can be prepared for that glorified body? So, yeah, I'll take anybody as long as, <laughs> as, long as it's in the kingdom. I feel you, bro, but I feel you. I feel you. But then you're going to get to a point. You're going to get to a point where you want everything that God has for you. Right now, I'm chasing my crowns, man. I ain't chasing heaven. I, he already, I'm already, I'm already going to be in eternal life with God. I ain't got to, I ain't got to worry about that no more. I ain't trying to make it to heaven. One, we're not going to be in heaven. We're going to be on earth in the new Jerusalem. And then when he destroyed this earth, we're going to be on a new earth. But I'm not fighting for that no more. I got it. Jesus gave it to me freely. You got that. But in the midst of that, I am now striving for my crowns. I am now striving to be put in leadership and over certain nations when he come back. He said that when he come back, he's going to reward us. And there's going to be sums that's granted nations to be over and ruler over and you're going to receive this crown and that crown. You're going to have that crown because you did that. And you're going to get this crown because you saved souls. And I want, I want my crowns. That's, <laughs> I, 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 I'm already, I'm already guaranteed a spot with them. <laughs> so yeah, what church? Hey, so, um, we, the church, we, we assemble as Kingdom Ambassadors Global Network. So we're not a church. We are the church. But we, the church, attend and assemble as Kingdom Ambassadors Global Network. So you can look that up. We online and in person. But I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I have to be politically correct with these things because a lot of us don't know what church means. And when people say we attend church, they think we going to a building or we about to go to church. But I'm trying my best in this day and age to let people know that we who are the body of Christ are the church and we who are the church go to a building and to assemble. So, yeah, that's I, and I ain't saying you don't know, but I'm just saying for those who may see this later that um, I can't attend church. We are the church. We are that. God called us to be that. We can't go to church today. I am. We are that. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's something he called us to be. Now we can go assemble. <laughs> we could, It's for fellowship. Yeah, we could go fellowship and, and go, you know, um, draw up some plans on how we're going to reach the lost today. How we're going to fight the flesh this week. You know, draw up some conclusions on, you know, figure out what what hit you hard this month and how we can, you know, fast and pray against it. You know how we can we the, we the we the church in this the church of East Point, Michigan. I'm in East Point. So we the church of East Point, you know, the church uh, Philippians, that was, they was a city. That's why he said the church of Philippians. They was a city he was talking about. So the church of East Point, we supposed to get together in East Point in that in that local zone and bring forth the kingdom of God in that territory. Yep, K-A-G-N. There you go, bro. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Our leader is Apostle John Guy. Apostle John Guy. And, um he is our he's our leader. He's on he's on here too. It's um John Guy Ministries. 
But our leader is the Apostle John Guy. Yep, and that's where we um, put that work in. This is an everyday, all day thing. Oh, Ace, facts, facts, every day, all day. Are you a citizen of United States? Every those who live in the United States, do you take your citizenship hat off, or, or is it on all day, every day? When you go to the bathroom, you a citizen. When you go to work, you a citizen. When you go to such and such, you a citizen. Wherever you, even if you go to jail, you a citizen. Everywhere you go, you a citizen. All day, every day. That is the same of the kingdom of God. You are a citizen of God's kingdom everywhere, all day, every day. You don't take the hat off and put it back on. You don't take the hat off because take put the hat on because you went to fellowship with the believers on a Saturday or Sunday, and then when you out the building, you take your citizenship back off. What is you talking about? You a citizen. You a son and heir to the kingdom. You supposed to embody this every day, all day. Your lifestyle. That is true worship. Worship ain't when you're sitting in the room and you got your hands up. That's a form of it. But true worship is your everyday life. When the king can evaluate your life like he did Job. See, do you did you see Job? Look at him. Praises me. He honors me with this with this with this work. He lives a lifestyle that resembles me. That's 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 true worship. When your everyday life is to walk in the praise of God and doing the justice, the honorable things, the things that's worthy to think about and talk about. When you go and help the poor, you go and help someone that needs help. You go and pray for someone. You go and do the righteous things. You cast down the dumb thoughts. You don't go do something to hurt your neighbor. You treat your wife unharshly and with love. You treat your children with righteous character. You show your parents respect and honor. You, sh you show your, the, body, the rest of the body of Christ. You serve them as a true brother or sister in Christ. You walk in obedience with Jesus as, as with the Holy Spirit your everyday life. You go to sleep, you wake up, and you do it all over again. And then y'all meet up Saturday and Sunday as one body. Y'all come together as, you know, huddle up. And we did. Y'all duty call your boy at work. So, um, but yeah, y'all get the drift. Y'all get the point. Let's put that work in for the kingdom of God. And let's show that we are children of the king. Let's show that we are heirs to the kingdom and that we are citizens of his kingdom in our everyday life. So I love y'all. Hey, um, all glory to the king, man. All glory. That's the, the point is to reach the lost and reach everyone. But um, as I say before I get off our lives, um, your truest relationship with the king, your truest relationship with God is when you by yourself. That's when your truest relationship with God is shown, when you're by yourself. I could act like I love Jesus wholeheartedly in front of y'all. Why? Because y'all watching me. So it's kind of easy to talk about Jesus and act like I love him and act like I'm following his steps. But when I cut this live off, am I still seeking his word, seeking his presence? Am I still casting down foolish thoughts? Am I still making sure the words that come out of my mouth are the, are the is pleasing to the, the ears of the father? Am I still making sure I do the righteous things? So when you by yourself, that shows your true heart with the king. So make sure you represent Jesus in your alone times righteously all right y'all love y'all and as always let's get it and lord willing i can see y'all next time all right y'all